we can start. Okay, we can start. We have exactly 30 minutes. We have a lot of new information for you that will be already uh, forward. Yeah, my name is Andreas. Andreas from uh, Absence. I'm presets consultant for our alliance partners in uh, Central Europe, like HP and so on. And uh, I'm together with uh, Johannes. Yeah, my name is Johannes. I'm presets here in Austria and also for the Eastern European countries. Okay, so we quick start. Um, what about user utilization? I don't know, but I think you know what user utilization is. But uh, for the beginning, we have uh, focused not only on the user state, now also on user data, user apps. It's an important part. And therefore, we have to change our picture. And this is uh, our internal picture about, um, yeah, all about the user. It's our donut. This is very, very cool picture. And uh, we want to address each part of the donor or one part of the donor in this session and any news about this. And it's all about not only Windows, it's only also about uh, iPad, you show you, and uh, yeah, Mac OS, iOS, and so on. Okay, what's new about um, system and integration? Uh, here are some points about our system and integration at the moment. So you see uh, there's a white paper. Have a look at it. Or you have a management pack for SCOM for the newest version also. And uh, yeah, you can deploy the agents and configurations in a normal way because they are MSIs. And there is also a new prototype uh, integration pack for Scotch. So you have the uh, option to look for orchestration, uh, some things with uh, absence. And uh, also in the system service, in the service manager. This is very interesting to service managers so, like self service portal and so on. So we have a, a new self service workflow uh, inside the service manager so you can reset your personal settings and so on. Um, we have shown this on the, on the Microsoft here and the, uh, the NMS. Um, and we have uh, on the one app deployment for EM, this means you can deploy the um, um, SCCM packages on demand and the user logs on So user as it says. SCCM packages. <clears throat> okay, what's new about personalization? John is so far. I am. <laughs> okay, this month we released new product versions of the Environment Manager, Application Manager, and Management Center. Okay. And I just want to share a little bit what's new, what are the enhancements we get out of our products. <coughs> So what's new in the Environment Manager version 8.3? We've done a lot of making the product more easy to use. If you think of a uh, personalization server in the past, it was just uh, a lot of work to get it up and running. And now we have a configuration wizard that helps you to set up the personalization server the first time. It makes use of application templates, so for Office, the Internet Explorer, and other common applications, you already have a built-in best practice configuration um, to get them personalized. Uh, now it's impossible to build up application groups based on the folder path. Uh, in the past, you had to specify each application and then group them together. And now you just uh, configure and folder path and applications on that base. We have a self-service portal so that even users could uh, reset their application settings or uh, take snapshots or archives of their user personality. It's quite simple, it's multi-language and, and interesting to use. And another important part is uh, desktop setting enhancements. In the past, yeah, you could just add some parts of the registry that were uh, applied during Logon and written back to the user personalization at Logon. And then it was just a few points where you could uh, tell the old versions if this should be managed or not, but there was no translation between different operating systems, and we only took uh, registry keys. In this release, um, we have a, real, uh, a more comprehensive list of what can be can be managed. So as you can see in the screenshot, um, you can decide if certain aspects of the user environment should be managed or not. 
if this setting should be shared across all platforms the user might use or you um, um, allow the user to use, uh, or it should be separated. So, for example, some settings only should be shared between Windows 7 devices, but not with the Windows XP system. And well, there's a lot of information. Uh, for example, if you choose one of these points, it will tell you which registry keys uh, there are used and, and which folders. So what's new in Application Manager? Uh, we already had the functionality User Rights Management to allow users to run certain applications or things in the operating system like management step-ins or things in the control panel uh, to run only the specific things you configure for them with admin rights. With version 8.5, we have the rights discovery mode so that means if you plan to implement the application manager and you want to uh, learn why which users and which applications need admin rights, you could configure this uh, in a passive mode just to detect yeah, which applications and user requires admin rights. Uh, you get out, out of centralized reports and with a click you could add those specific applications, for example, uh, to your configuration to blank or whitelist this thing. So, um, who has heard about absence labs? Okay, <laughs> that's good. Okay, uh, product development, uh, our geeks, that speak to customers and partners to develop new technologies have now their own site where they share interesting technology with us. Um, you can test it and, and give us feedback what you think about it. And the first product we released there is Strata Apps, uh, user managed applications. So what does it mean? It's not uh, we don't manage application or we don't want to uh, provide a framework for application de development or deployment uh, like uh, software distribution, application streaming and things like that. Uh, we take care of those applications the user want to, to, to use but they are not part of, of the corporate application set. So these little fancy tools and, and apps uh, you typically use to be more productive and, and more comfortable. And yeah, but typically on a, on a lockdown device from a company, you don't have admin rights. Uh, the IT has to focus on the main corporate uh, apps, de de uh, deployment and maintenance. And we provide there a possibility for the user to install applications on their own, which are installed into a sandbox. So that means there is no impact uh, on the device itself. And um, yeah, follow me apps that might be interesting for uh, virtual desktops. If you think of pooled, uh, pooled desktop images, and there are some applications already in the image, some maybe will be streamed. But what about uh, the acceptance from users that require additional software on their desktop, on their VDI. So uh, our idea is like follow me apps to provide that for the user so that the app is then stored on the file share and it doesn't matter on which pool BI image the user will log on, he will receive additional to his applications on, on the VDI, his, his own apps he installed. And this is what I want to show you now in a live demonstration. So I have here a Windows 7 machine, I'm logged on as a user, and I have here this file I can't open because the proper application is not installed on the system. And as you can see, I know which, which application I have to install, but 
I'm not allowed. I'm not administrator on this machine. Yeah, as we can see here. So here is Strata apps. It's like a virtualization layer on that machine. And I will now turn it on. And I've already prepared some some applications for us, like Xmind, VLC Player, and things like that. So um, if I move back to my documents, you can see now that I'm now able to start this application and open this document. And if you want uh, Strata apps, these applications, there can be a border around to identify it, if it's a corporate application or if it's a user installed a Strata app the user is using. So, and I want to demonstrate how to how easy it is to install an application with Strata apps. So I have here my own app store and I want to install TerraCopy. So this is not an app store from, from, from <laughs> yeah, corporate app sense. This is a private app store. Yeah. It's not like it's not multiply. So as you can see now, Strata Apps recognizes that an application installation is being started and grants the appropriate rights to the user for this process. Yeah, we have already um, also here this order around the setup. And the user can click through the installation. Different to other application virtualization technologies, yeah. um, it looks like that the application is located in the program files directory. Yeah. So there is one more filter in the stack. Now. Yep, <laughs> one more. Correct. Right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> but if um, this virtualization layer is being disabled. Okay, let's switch it up and have a look what happens to, to the file system and also the registry. Yes, so if I disable Strata layer, yeah, the folder of this application disappear, also all the registry settings, so nothing is in, uh, has to be changed on, on the corporate device and it looks like that the application has never been there. So you want to, I think we have one question. Yeah. Can I manage this application from a central data store? I put it into my unit. Yeah, at, at the moment, Strata Apps is from Epson's Labs, so it's a standalone agent for free. Um, it's planned for the, the roadmap to have a central management overall. So you can uh, control okay, uh, which applications are installed by which user, and uh, you can deliver, of course, I think in the future, a corporate app store where all these uh, user created packages are deployed or whatever. Those are from the store. Because you can use Red Apps to replace FE. No, no, it's not our focus to replace FE okay. because FE is a central deployment for simple apps. Okay. We can do it in, in addition for all these uh, little tools uh, for many users. Um, and uh, we have the idea, we have tested, and uh, it could be a way in the future to easy migrate these uh, Strata apps packages in a NetB page. Yes, this would be great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's no official roadmap. <laughs> so right now we just want to get feedback which applications are working and and, and a lot of people to, to test this software. For example, we don't have these problems like other when in the past uh, installing um, 
software that's using drivers, for example, you can install iTunes and communicate with your iPad. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. 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 So uh, download it and you can give uh, feedback to the product owners. And uh, this is the way if, if, how, how Apps and Labs works. This is support for us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Now we we'll, would like to hand over to Andreas again. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, this is the second uh, product from Absence that is Absence um, Data Logger. It's also for free. What does Absence Data Logger? Absence Data Logger does easily encrypt and decrypt files, no more. But it's uh, it's useful if you're using Dropbox or such as things to decrypt or encrypt your your important files because they are public. It's working at the moment at uh, Windows and Mac OS and iOS, <coughs> and um, yeah, it's free. It's also downloadable from the apps and in the App Store. And this is uh, two screenshots to show you this is the GUI for my Windows. So easy, you put your files in there, type a test phrase, click OK, and then it's encrypted inside the Dropbox, and um, there's a native Dropbox integration uh, in iOS. This means you can easily directly open from Dropbox these encrypted files and uh, type in the test phrase and you have your data. I copy the file in another location. Is the file still encrypted then? Or? Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can also use it in other ways. So you can encrypt it and put it in your um, exchange on where you have want or on local so file or whatever. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a standalone encryption decryption tool. This is data worker. And it's for free. Um, one interesting I think, or most important, uh, you I think it's, it's data now. I don't know. Have you any heard about data now at the moment? A little bit. Okay. Um, data now is, of course, not for free. Um, no, it's a it's a data broker. So it's it's. Yeah, we have heard about right here. Hyperdrive. We have heard Dropbox, SkyDrive, whatever cloud services or or uh, data services. Um, and data now is, is a data broker. So it's between. Um, your current infrastructure inside your company and the clients. This is the difference. And uh, so you have access to, to this for any device. At the moment, we have uh, clients for Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, and also web interface for that. And um, we are using enterprise connectors. The first enterprise connector in this beta release is um, at the moment for Active Directory, Directory. So you are able to access your home drive for, of course, iOS or whatever you want. Um, and you can put these files on the notebook and take it offline with you. Yeah. And um, this is the big picture about Data Now. So you have in the middle the virtual and for the um, yeah, Hyper-V, um, E6, and um, Tensor, I think. Yeah. Um, then you have desktop clients with uh, Windows and Mac, and you have tablets, mobiles, and so on. <coughs> and, uh, in the future, and I think we have shown yesterday or we have on preform um, um, prototype where we connect to a SkyDrive and such as things. So it's uh, it's the way to expand these connectors. This is what we want to do. So the appliance is typically located in the team set, and the agents communicate over HTTPS with their clients which is just a data broker to your file servers and your storage. So nothing out in the cloud. Yeah, there was a question. Do you need an agent? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You have an agent for each uh, operating system. Okay. So or you're using the web interface. It's also web interface. So it can be used with a, with a NAS, with a either. Yeah, yeah. any infrastructure, infrastructure you use today. With, yeah. with any infrastructure, yeah, you have a file server, you have a Windows file share or whatever. It's, it's if, I, if I have a NAS mm -hmm. and uh, I can put an agent on it, right? No, then you don't need, need, need it. No. no, you need an agent on the client side. Yes, that's the client. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You don't need an agent on your file server. Oh, okay. Nothing. You only, you only configure the, uh, the Active Directory connection, okay. and then you have uh, um, put down the home share to the user. That's all. So you don't need to install anything on your own file servers. And the available shares you configure on the, on the appliance server? 
No, you need to configure uh, the shares. We have the, uh, it's the option the user is always available. So it's defined in the kit library. And if it's and not defined there, it's... If there is nothing defined, so the user has no, no flash share. So it's only for the home drive? Yeah, it's only for the home drive. Yeah. In, in, in the base device, right? In the base device, yeah. So this is the first connector, yeah. And this will be expanded to different other connectors. And then we have the option. Could be also with SharePoint, though. Could be the option. We will see what happens. Um, okay. I think we should also make a short demo about this. So, is this the right one? Yeah. This is the right one? So I've installed here the, the data now agent. And um, we have the options in three different modes. So I have an online only mode and uh, just in time mode and online offline mode. So in this uh, case I have online offline mode and uh, I have different yeah, documents here, and you see it's under the decree, it's uh, replicated. And what I want to do is to make a new document, a new uh, Word document, and we begin an interesting content. Uh, so, can you read it? Yeah. Who comes from Germany? Oh, it's going to be interesting to know. <laughs> oh, I've said, not safe, I want to say it. So, okay, I will save it, and then we will switch to Wiener. So, yeah. We will switch to Wiener to an iPad. This is live. So, the iPad. Uh, the, the data now is now running directly on this notebook, and we have connected over WLAN to the iPad. So we have here the data now app that connects over HTTPS to the appliance, and if you just have a look at my documents, we can see the the created Word document and open it. You have a list of recent open files and things like that. It's it's fast, it's simple, and provides everything you need being on the road. And uh, because we have uh, will, will, will all the files from your home folder be sync synchronized to your local client, or can you manage which files are? At the moment, there are all files synchronized, and uh, there are plans to restrict which file types or uh, the size. Yeah, I think it was important. Yeah, I, I think this will be the SPX Congress common policy that we can install. Can you find integration between Data Logger and this feature here? Because Could be also, yeah, like encryption inside the, the data now, I think it's also an option, and I think it will be the next feature. With the, 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 the clients, the same way as soon as drop across the back, same way to download everything to the mobile client, it will just present pictures. So then, on the iPad, it's just an online connection. When the user clicks um, on the file, okay. it's transferred away. Yeah, if, I, if I use my, my tablet, uh, I don't want my whole, the contents of my whole home folder or my no, it's only the link. It's you only just link. see the files, but it's not already on the machine. Yeah, but it's also offline, so... It depends on the client device. On Windows, it's a little offline as well, but not on an iPad or Android phone right now. On macOS, of course, it's also offline available. So if you have a device where you can work, and where you can edit the... But you can also choose for an Android or for a tablet to go offline. Or yeah. Yeah. So on a few only devices like iOS and Android, you only have... Uh, the same, the exact same this, is, this is a, a quick view on, on the appliance itself. So you see all this running, and you have a certificate, you have Active Directory uh, connection, and so on. And it's really easy to configure. Okay, you configure the SSL certificate, you configure the Active Directory connector, uh, the DNS, and the admin users, and that's all. It's, it's really, really quick. And now it's only home folder, right? Home folder. Yeah, it's it's the home folder. Uh, yeah. um, um, at the moment, it's only home share. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. in the future, it's 
future you will also be able to create a share that you can share with We're thinking about collaboration services and, and exchange files and things like that. But it's still in the future phase. It's not really, it's not... It, it's still in the future phase. It's still in the future phase. It's still in the future phase. And you can register. You can register on the you can try it. Your feedback and uh, request additional features. So, um, so it's really easy to set up. Five to ten minutes, and you have it up and running. Um, but we have a lot of more news. We have four minutes. Okay. Reds, Repsphere is uh, the first company. Rep, rep, not rest, 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 rest. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the first company we have acquired. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, very interesting. Uh, there was a, a video, the first video from, from the technology of the Citrix event on this uh, Citrix uh, You can look at the uh, customization at here, Jake Madden. So you will see an interview at the live demonstration on this technology. Uh, it's very interesting. It, it's, it's app wrap, wrapping and iOS and Android. So you have to control about apps and data on these devices. <laughs> okay. Do you all know what my absence is? I think so. It's like my Citrix. It's our personal portal, and uh, there are now interesting things inside. Um, so you have to look at AppSense Exchange. AppSense Exchange is like a community, <coughs> so you can put in there configuration examples, you can uh, put in there uh, or can download there configuration examples, and you have yeah, a community tool. You have also best practice in there, you have uh, videos from new functionalities in there, you have the education stuff in there. It's very, very cool. Okay, and but last, last but not least, tomorrow, Gary, Gary will hold a masterclass with uh, Absence in the Enterprise, but a lot about, about more with data now and Stella apps and all the current products. Um, I think I will also attend, we will see even if you have advanced questions about this technology, I think we can do it also tomorrow. We will see. No? <laughs> you have only two and a half hour. That's not, not so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's all. Any questions?